In this video, I will show you how to install file server role on Windows Server. And also we'll be preparing a share for software deployments using group policy in the future videos. As you can see, I have my Windows Server instances installed in VMware Workstation. Currently, I have two Windows servers. One is Active Directory Domain Services and other one is DHCP server. And I will be installing file server role on the DHCP server because it's not recommended to have multiple roles on Active Directory Domain Services server. And let's begin installing the file server role by clicking on Add Roles and Features here in the Server Manager. Here we need to click Next. Make sure that role-based or feature-based installation is selected and click Next. And here, if you have multiple servers added to your server manager, you need to select the on which you want to install the role. In my case, I don't have any servers added to the server manager, so I will just click Next. Here we want to expand file and storage services, then expand file and iSCSI services, and select file server. Then click Next, Next, and Install. And now file server role is installed. We can close this window. Now to start creating the share, let's go here in the left menu and select file and storage services. And because we have our file server role installed, we have few more options. Let's click on shares. Now to create a new share, we need to go here in the middle where you see tasks. Click on it and then select new share. And for my software deployment share, the current profile that is selected, SMB share quick is just what I want. So I will click next here. Here we can decide if we want to share an entire drive or a single folder. In my case, I will be sharing a folder. So I will select type a custom path and click browse. As you can see, I have two hard drives connected to the server and I will be using D drive and I will create a folder here by clicking on new folder and I will name it software. And then I will click on select folder and once more and now I can click next. Here we can change the name of our share or add a description but I will leave it on defaults and click next. In this screen, we don't want any of these features, so I will remove the check mark on allow caching of the share and click next. And for the permissions, I do want to customize them a little bit. So for that, let's click on customize permissions. Then let's go to the share tab first. And as you can see, currently we have principal everyone and access full control. And in most cases that might be fine, but we can make it a little bit more secure. So for that, let's select it and click on the remove. And instead of everyone, we'll be using authenticated users. So for that, let's click on add, then select principle. And here I will type out ten and click on check names. Then it will find the available users. And I will select authenticated users, click OK. Okay, once more, as you can see, by default, it gives only read permissions and that's just what we want. Click OK once more. And the important bit of information to understand here that authenticated users are similar to everyone, but it's everyone that is in our domain. And it covers both users and computers because when deploying software using group policy, we have two options. One of them is uh, that the computer installs the software during startup and in that case the computer needs the permissions to our share and other case is when the user is installing software either during the startup or from the control panel and in that case the user will need the access to the share and also we want to add users or groups that will be administrating this share in this case i will use domain admins group but in production environment, you should not use the main admins group. You should create a separate group uh, responsible for the share. So for that, I will click add, then select principle. Here I will type domain, check names, select domain admins, click OK, and give it full control, and then OK. 
and like I said before, using domain admins for shared administration is not a great idea in production environments, but because this is a test environment, I will be fine. So for the next step, let's go to the permissions tab. And first thing that we want to do is to disable the inheritance. And let's click on convert inherited permissions into explicit permissions on this object. Then let's remove the local users group. Let's click on it here and then once again here. And then once more, we we'll need to click add, select principle, and once again, let's add authenticated users. Like before, it gives us uh, default permissions for reading. And in this case, well, users will be installing software so they only need read permissions for this share let's click ok and for administration i will add domain administrators also and in this case i will give it full control and click ok now when we can click apply and ok then here we can click on next and create close and as you can see here now in the server manager we see our share we can right click on it and then click on open share and as you can see here it opened file explorer for us using the network path and let's try to create a file and it managed to create the file successfully because this user is in domain admins group and to double check i will go to one of my client virtual machines to see if the share works here also uh, let me show you uh, who am i this is a regular user account and let's check what groups does it have as you can see, he only belongs to the main users. So he should be able to access the share, but he shouldn't have permissions to delete files or create new files. Okay, back to the file explorer. Here I will enter the server name. And as you can see, we can see our share. Let's go inside of it. We can see the contents and we can open the text file. But if I write anything here and try to save it, it asks us to change the location because we don't have the permissions to write into the share. And that's exactly what we want in this case, because when the user will be installing the software, he only needs the read permissions so he can install it. And he doesn't need to write there anything. And that's it for this video. In the future, I will show you how to install software using group policy. And in those videos, we will be using this share. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And see you in the next one.